I guess we gather here today to talk about ideas, positive inroads we can make to gain back our power, to become triumphant in the next election. We certainly know that the Democratic Party thinks our voices have been silenced. They boast that they're the winners and we have nothing to say. Well, we certainly know how they won. Obama's path to the presidency has been thoroughly documented. We may want to look at some of those strategies as we build toward the 2010 elections. Certainly, at the outset, the Democrats fulfilled their mission to paint President Bush as a warmonger. And once they were able to reach all the youth in colleges on the internet with this lie, painting him as the evil one, never giving him credit for keeping our country safe. Once they established that, then it would be easy to bring in the one, as Oprah Winfrey crowned him. I'm also ashamed to say the Hollywood crowd was a big part of the tearing down of President Bush. And they had a great influence in bringing in Obama in as well. Never mind that it was as clear as the nose on your face who Obama was attached to. Nothing seemed to matter. It was amazing to me how the media and the young generation were taken in by Obama's false haloistic presence and all his attachments to all the wrong people, heirs, Wright, Flager, Alinsky, didn't matter one iota. Obama, as a candidate, portrayed himself as a moderate, but turned out to be wildly radical. The way he played his deception is interesting, but his campaign was meticulously thought through, well organized, and their techniques of outreach to gather support and funds through the internet were innovative, and their Hollywood savvy in the use of media was masterful. All their strategies should be carefully looked at to see if we might mimic them in a positive, legal way. My most pressing concern at this hour is the safety of Israel. I think Obama has no idea that Israel was built on the blood and sweat of the Jewish people, every blade of grass, every tree, has been a successful e effort because of the Jewish people understanding they would have a safe homeland forever. He could not possibly understand this, or he would know that the Jewish people have tried time and time again to give the Palestinians land and bring a peaceful solution. But every attempt, every attempt, was returned with violence. The Palestinians used Gaza to attack Israel. As far as I'm concerned, their only agenda is to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. And he represent, reprimands the Israeli people, Obama, like he's a professor and they're the school children. I was embarrassed to watch his press conference with the great war hero, Benjamin Netanyahu, who has helped keep his country safe for many years. Obama sat there with complete arrogance that he is now the new American power, able to dictate what he thinks is best for Israel. So how worried are we supposed to be now? Was I hearing things when he said that Iran might have the right to nuclear power? Are we supposed to be sitting and waiting, watching for the possibility of a new Holocaust? Who's going to take the responsibility to keep America, Israel safe? I'll tell you why this really scares the hell out of me, because everything Obama has recommended has turned out to be disastrous.
his so-called stimulus package and his budget will leave our grandchildren with great burdens and great debts. The government is now owning car companies and banks, and we're losing job after job. Our unemployment rate is an astronomic 9.4. And of course, they send out Joe Biden, one of the great double talkers of our time, to tell us the unemployment rate is getting better. The government wants to run health care and tell people what doctors they can see, how much they can make, what cars to drive. And they're killing off the entrepreneurs who are the backbone of our economy. It's no wonder that the Russian newspaper Pravda, the former house organ for the Soviet communist regime, recently said the American descent into Marxism is happening with breathtaking speed. We can blame Nancy Pelosi, Harry Reid, Chris Dodd, George Soros, David Axelrod, and their ilk for the downfall of this country. It saddens me greatly to think we were the great power for good in the world. We as Americans knew America to be strong, and we were the liberators of the entire world. We are becoming a weak nation. Obama really thinks he is a soft-spoken Julius Caesar. He thinks he's going to conquer the world with his soft-spoken sweet talk, and really thinks he's going to bring all the enemies of the world into a little playground where they'll swing each other back and forth. We and we alone are the right frame of mind to free this nation from this Obama oppression. And let's give thanks to all the great people like Sean Hannity, Rush Limbaugh, Bill O'Reilly, Laura Ingram, Mark Levin, William Bennett, Glenn Beck, Hugh Hewitt, Dennis Prager, Michael Medved, Dennis Miller, Dick Morris, Ann Coulter, John Kasich, Michael Steele, Carl Rove, Newt Gingrich, Thomas Sowell, Victor Davis Hanson, Shelby Steele, Charles Krautheimer, Michelle Malkin, Fred Barnes, and so many others. Let's give thanks to them for not giving up and staying the course to bring an end to this false prophet, Obama.